All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to U.S. Streamer for December... What the heck is today? December 11th, 2014. I'm Jeremy Parrish, and I am playing Super NES RPG Semi-Classic Brandish by Nihon Falcom, published by Koei, I think, in the U.S. Anyway, it's a pretty weird game, and I'm going to show it off for you. Uh, I see there's someone in the chat stream with the name JDK Love, so clearly some Nihon Falcom fans uh, out representing tonight, so I hope I live up to your expectations. Um, I'm going to use this game slot, which has basically no substance to it. Alright, so the game basically begins by your dude Arik falling into, I think he has a different name in the US version, but anyway. Arik falls into this dungeon, and uh, in classic RPG style, falling into a dungeon doesn't kill him, it simply inconveniences him. But now your mission is to escape this dungeon by climbing up a billion different levels of the dungeon while avoiding this uh, woman named Dola, a, a mage who's out to destroy you because she mistakenly thinks that you killed her father or something. Anyway, so we're going to look at the really weird thing about this game, which is that you don't turn your character, you turn the world around your character. This is very disorienting. Um, you can see the compass up at the top, the top right next to Ruins Area 1, and it shows the orientation. So I'm facing south now, I turn, I'm facing north, I'm going to go south and check out this uh, treasure chest. I've seen people refer to this as like a dungeon crawler, which it is, or like a roguelike, which it's not. It's it's very definitely a um, mapped game, like it, you know everything is clearly defined. Um, but it definitely has kind of the mercilessness of a roguelike. Uh, it it wants to kill you. It wants you to be sad. Um, <clears throat> one thing it does have in common with games like Share and the Wanderer or other roguelikes is that your weapons are limited. You can see the swords that I've collected. Those have a number next to them. That's how many times I can attack an enemy with them before they break. So if you're familiar with um, Final Fantasy Legend, it's like that. Uh, I guess Spelunky does that too. Anyway, so this dungeon is very devious, and like I said, it's very confusing because everything turns. And it might seem kind of weird that you have this Super NES RPG and everything is about rotating the world, but it doesn't use a mode 7 effect, but if you look at the way things are rotating, you can see why it doesn't do that, because you're always, it's kind of this forced three-quarters perspective, and whichever way you're facing, you're always looking at sort of that wall. Uh, so here's a door, it's locked, I need to back up. You can actually crab walk if you hold down the shoulder triggers, um, but mostly you're going to be getting around by rotating the world around you. Anyway, I've activated activated the switch, so now this door is open, and there's a little message over here. You can't just touch the message to look at it, you have to use the, uh, the R trigger, which is a modifier, to bring up the magnifying glass to examine it. So, that looks kind of grim. It doesn't, uh, doesn't bode well for, for my adventure, I'm sure. Um, Anyway, so this area right here is, is actually pretty gentle. It doesn't uh, put you up against any enemies, and the first enemies you'll face are all pretty simple, pretty easy to beat. Let's uh, skip the door I'm supposed to go to and walk through this path instead. Oh, it's a dead end. Okay, well, nothing happening here. So back down to the previous floor. And while this can be disorienting, there is a map. If you bring up, if you hit the star button, it'll bring up a map, and you can kind of see where it's uh, where you've been. It's all auto mapping, but it's kind of like Etrian Odyssey in that you only auto map in the spaces where you've traveled to, that you've actually physically walked over. So it's really important to check out as much of the game as possible. Another thing about this game is that you can jump, and uh, Arik kind of automatically jumps for you. Uh, so that becomes really important later in the game when you start seeing pits and uh, other traps like that. So another dead end up on uh, BF of the ruins. I don't even know what BF is supposed to stand for. Best friend. 
All right, so there's clearly clearly nothing to be done by going the wrong direction, so I will go ahead and walk into this area. And I've hit another switch that exposes some more uh, areas. Once the doors open, you kind of see what's ahead of you. And you can see flying insects here that will uh, fly around and attack me if I'm unlucky. <clears throat> and the, uh, the weird uh, camera rotation of this game can make combat really difficult. Like if something comes up, yeah, it flies around you and uh, you have to be really careful. Uh, so already I'm, I'm doing kind of badly against these bugs. But it's always a good idea to go hunt down enemies to keep them from making your life difficult sneaking up on you. As you can see, unlike in a lot of RPGs, a lot of action RPGs, Enemies aren't really restricted by uh, doors and things like that. I mean, if they can go someplace, they do, which can be really, really uh, frustrating at times. There we go. One down. And as you can tell, I'm sure if you're watching this wondering, oh my god, what's happening? Um, the, the rotation system gets really, really disorienting, especially with the graphics all kind of looking the same with the limitations of 16-bit systems, so uh, expect me to get lost a lot because that's just the nature of this game. Alright, so there is another switch, and this is actually the first puzzle in the game. Um, there's a switch here that you can see opened up that, uh, opened up that door, but there's another switch that closes the door. Alas, what will I do? The answer, of course, is to jump over the switch. So right there, you're kind of learning, oh, you need to jump sometimes uh, in order to advance. That guy is not very smart, and I killed him. Another switch. And um, hopefully you guys can hear the music at home, because the music in this game is so good. I mean, it's Falcom. What do you expect? I I'm sure JDK Love in the chat can... Uh, can attest to the fact that Falcom games pretty much always have amazing music, but this is a uh, this game's a little different than the usual Falcom butt rock. It's um, much more atmospheric, which you know fits the the nature of the game. This is not like East or something along those lines where it's really fast paced and intense. It's a much more slow paced and methodical game. So the um, you know the the soundtrack that they've created here. It changes over the course of the game, but it fits the uh, fits the nature of the adventure pretty nicely, I'd say. Um, this right here is my best friend. It's a healing spring. If I touch it, then it makes me better. And uh, one nice thing about this game is you can pretty much save any time you want. So I'm going to save here because my health is full again. And the game kind of has an auto-save system. It'll, it'll save sometimes uh, when you least expect it, which can be uh, a little troubling. Um, especially here in the early game where your stats are so poor. Um, there's a pretty simple level up system with this game and uh, as you kill enemies you'll gain experience. Uh, I don't even see my experience listed but I'm sure it's somewhere. It's been a while since I played the original version of this. Um, also an, a nice thing to know is that if you don't want to use the d-pad to rotate the game um, you can use you can set the L and R buttons to rotate, but I actually find that more difficult, even though it seems like it might be more intuitive. Um, so I'm going to stick with the, uh, the default setup, but I can also change the uh, menu color, I guess. Oh no, Arx color. Wow, I can make him green. Kind of looks like um, the dude from Crystalis when I make him that color. Oh, there we go. Now he's Edel from, uh, from Ys. Uh, and now I've forgotten which way I was going, so let's see. Uh, looks like straight ahead and to the right. Nope, that door is locked. And I've locked myself in. So actually, I don't think I can... Uh, can I go back this way? Oh, there we go. And, um... Why don't we experiment and see what happens if I walk into a pit? I think I may just go down to another area. Oh no, I just get stuck. Okay, never mind. I have to jump out. Um, in case you're wondering why I'm playing Brandish of all games, this 
RPG that very few people have ever heard of. Um, it's a couple of reasons. The first is that uh, there's a remake of the game, a really good remake, that's coming out soon in the U.S. for PSP, called Brandish the Dark Revenant. And um, it's very faithful, but at the same time, it also makes a lot of um, sort of quality of life adjustments to make the game more playable and a lot more accessible. And I played probably like 25 or 30 hours of the Japanese import until I got to a point where I needed to know some complex Japanese to figure out some riddles. So I ended up uh, kind of stopping at that point. I'm looking forward to playing it in English. Uh, Xseed is supposed to be publishing it later this month. Maybe it'll be next month. I haven't really heard anything more. But you know how PSP... Uh, yes, it's a PSP game that they're releasing in 2014. So, you know, there, there's probably not a lot of hype for that one. A lot of press. But um, it's definitely worth checking out when it comes. Um, it, it Just the simple fact that it's... Um, you know, it's rendered in polygons. So... You don't have this like quick, sharp, 90-degree turn whenever you rotate the camera. It's much more smooth and uh, less disorienting. It makes a big difference to the playability of Brandish. So uh, definitely worth checking out when and if it comes out here. Um, the other reason is that basically I was looking through my collection of games to find something that I could play on Super NES, and that was a cartridge that was accessible. I'm actually playing this on a Super NES system. I've got a an RPB, RGB modded Super NES that I've got running through an upscaler, so the picture looks really clean, but there'll be parts, um, like in shops, where there's large fields of, uh, like the dialogue boxes have big fields of blue. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll notice some kind of like image blurring and, and uh, degradation there. So it's not, a, it's not perfect, but I mean, this is, um, Definitely a much nicer way to play than uh, just emulating it. It's uh, there's no question about authenticity. The music sounds perfect because this is the actual version of the game. So even though it's uh, a little bit fussy and not entirely perfect, it's uh, still a nice a nice setup to, to play the game with. The the one downside is that my Super NES controller I bought it off eBay and it's really a piece of garbage. So. If you hear weird noises and I, I start cursing because it's not being responsive, that's why. So, as you can see, this is a very, very slow-paced game. Um, and I actually don't remember where I'm supposed to go. There's shops somewhere. Um, so you'll just kind of have to bear with me while I stumble around trying to orient myself. Um, there, there have actually been four... Four games in the Brandish series. Oh, here we go. Shops. Uh, four games in the Brandish series. All the games, I think, were originally designed for the PC-8801, um, which is a Japanese personal computer that never came to the U.S. But this is a port of that, and it's, it's not too bad, all things considered. Um, all of this seems kind of expensive, but here's something I need. It's a sledgehammer, but I think I can buy it more cheaply at the other shop. Steel ball. Oh, actually, um, I think the sledgehammer is fewer uses for... Uh, yeah, I think this is buying in bulk, so I'm going to buy it here. And also the steel balls. So neither of these are actually weapons, despite the fact that this is a weapon shop. These are important tools for getting about and surviving in the, the course of the game. Um, anyway, so Brandish Super NES uh, port, a little weird. I think the original game controlled with a mouse, which I think was more intuitive. I haven't really played that version, but I've heard good things about it. Um, let's see, so I can buy some potions. I don't have enough money for anything, so... Uh, I guess I could buy a broken sword. Um, unfortunately, that's not the cool adventure game. It's just a broken sword that's pretty much useless. Um, I've heard really good things about Brandish 2, which uh, was a Super NES game. The Planet Buster never translated. And then Brandish 3 and 4 are supposed to be really good. Although Brandish 4 apparently is really weird. and has uh, a lot of different playable characters and uh, feels very different than the other Brandish games. At least that's what I've heard. I'm going by hearsay here. <clears throat> and it looks like this is a magic shop. Uh, 
and I'm a little too poor to be a magic user right now. I think magic is for the 1%. So here at the beginning of the game, I'm poor and have to use fisticuffs. Um, as you noticed, those, those prices were really expensive, and it's actually possible to backtrack pretty much as, uh, as much as you want into old areas of the game. So I suppose if you get a lot of money later in the game, you can climb all the way back down to level one and uh, go back and buy some magic. So what I'm looking for now are a couple of places where there are pockmarks on the wall. Those are weak points that I need to hit with a sledgehammer. And I don't remember exactly where I saw those. I don't think they're marked on the map, either. No, they're not. So, once again, I'm just kind of wandering around trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And I can't remember if enemies regenerate after you uh, defeat them and kind of zone out or if uh, I just haven't killed all the enemies that I've seen. Okay, here's here's one of the points where I can use a sledgehammer. I'm gonna go kill that other guy, that bug, because I don't want him to sneak up while I'm trying to hit the wall with a sledgehammer. All right. So it's all, it's all well and good for me to attack enemies, but as you can see, my sword is kind of gradually degrading. I've only got nine uses left on this one sword after starting out with 30. So, that's unfortunate. Oh, I need to use... this. There we go. So I've done some demolition here, and... can now do some more demolition. So, pretty, pretty simple puzzle um, environmental navigation here at this part of the game, but uh, it gets much more complicated. And you start seeing things like this, where you fall into a hole by surprise. And that's what the steel balls are for. I'm going to try dropping a steel ball here. Yep, it's a pit. And another pit. So the steel balls basically, they uh, trigger pitfalls so that you don't fall into them and lose health. And they're kind of given away with those little uh, rocks on the ground, usually. And of course enemies don't have any problem flying over pits to get me. That's awesome. What a jerk. Yep. All these locked doors or chests. Unfortunate. Alright, so I took damage and wasted my sledgehammer and my steel balls for nothing at this point. Eventually I'll get some keys and I can open up those locked chests. Locked chests, but you know, here in the beginning of the game, everything is unfriendly and hateful. Um, I see, as I kind of glance at the uh, the chat, I see that JDK Love is dropping all kinds of brandish science on people. So check that out, that, that out if you're interested in getting a better uh, rundown of the games than I can give you. Um, if you are just joining in to the stream and wondering what the hell's going on, hello. Welcome to our stream. I'm sorry that this is so confusing. I'm playing Brandish for Super NES. Uh, it's a US Gamers retro, retro Thursday stream. It happens every week. I'm Jeremy Parrish, and this is a pretty interesting RPG by Nihon Falcom that um, has a kind of weird design, as you can see, where the game rotates uh, instead of me turning. It's basically the Egoist's video game. The world revolves around me. Like, literally. It's kind of uh, kind of like when Zephod Beeblebrox went into the infinite perspective vortex. He's the most important person in the universe. And in this game, so is Arik. And while you can strafe, um, you, you kind of like to rotate because you can see the front faces of walls and look for switches and uh, weak points and doors and so forth. So I'm looking for another spot to smash with a sledgehammer. That's not it. 
This might not have been the best game to show off on a uh, live stream because it's a little slow paced and uh, it's really easy to get lost. But what can you do? I hope you'll bear with me. Um, if nothing else, there's really nice music that you can enjoy. It's very relaxing. You can just kind of chill out. JDK trance. And, uh... Oh, look, I got him without he him getting me. I'm getting better at this. I'm trying to remember if there were... walls back here that I could hit. Maybe I can find something in the, uh, the basement area. Nope. <clears throat> so someone's recommending I change the game speed, but um, that makes the enemies faster, and that sucks. I'm not confident about my ability to kill enemies on a live stream with the, uh, the game running at high speeds. Alright, so I'm gonna do a quick save. And, um, so I'm looking at the area map here. You can see everywhere I've been to. Um, I guess the place I need to go to now is over to the right side, uh, the east. So that's where I'm going to head. But of course it gets very confusing because everything rotates around me. And it gets a little swimmy. But there is a handy compass at the top of the screen to help me keep my ori orientation. Wow, my short sword already broke. It's very unfortunate. On the other hand, I moved up a level, so I'm now slightly stronger. Oh, there's there's a uh, wall that I can smash through. Jerk. So I use the sledgehammer. What the heck is that? And I have broken into a goblin's home or something. I guess I don't need to go to the menu to activate special items. The uh, item in your second slot there that kind of hovers next to Eric is... Um, you can use it with your X button. That's handy. Once again, this game is coming... Uh, a remake of this game is coming to um, PSN soon from Xseed, and it's a really good remake. Wow, that's, that's very granular. My arm is stronger. So I haven't just moved up a level, but now I have a stronger arm. Just one arm, though. It's like a, you know, a professional bowler. One arm is going to be really big, and the other is going to be really puny. So, uh, when this comes to PSN, I recommend everyone checking it out. Brandish the Dark Revenant is a really good game, really fun. Hmm. I think there are keys somewhere, but I haven't found any. So is there actually anyone watching the stream? How about that? There are some people. Thanks for uh, sticking it out with this really, really slow-paced and weird RPG. Oh yeah, my arm strength is increased. I can kill that guy in three hits instead of four. So I'm actually at a little bit of a loss. Um, if anyone in the stream has played this before, do you remember if you can buy keys? Did, did I just overlook those in the shop or something? There's always the risk in this game that you're going to get so bogged down killing bad guys that you will uh, run out of sword, and uh, then you're in big trouble since weapons are destructible. I've already used half of this long sword, and then that's it for me. I don't think I have additional money yet, do I? 
Nope, still 400 gold. So, um, this could be a short and sad adventure if I end up running out of weapons. That's the locked chests. Once again, this game, super disorienting. I actually assume I'm looking for switches that will open the doors, but I haven't seen any yet. <clears throat> Alright, someone in the, uh, the chat says I need to go to the lower right and left corners. Um, okay, so that means north and then west. Got it. And someone in the chat is asking why the game has this sort of disorienting, uh, rotating view. I honestly couldn't begin to tell you. It's just a weird thing they did. It definitely makes the game unique, but um, a little, a little, uh, a little unfriendly at times. So let's see. I'm moving south. This is definitely a game to play by yourself. Oh look, there's a key on this shop. I wonder if they sell keys. Hi there. Um, so they actually don't. But at the very least, I can sell my... Uh, my short sword, my broken sword, for tin gold. That's great. Thanks so much. Well, let's see what she has to say. Aha! A little world building. <clears throat> so I guess most people come to this labyrinth and die, but she set up a business. Selling stuff to people who are going to die soon. she gives you a little bit of a hint on using sledgehammers and steel balls, which is nice of her. Alright, well that was fun, but unfortunately no keys. At the very least, maybe I can buy a replacement sword for when this one dies. Nope. So yeah, SOL. Oh wait, maybe I should talk to that guy, see if he has anything interesting to say. Probably not, but you never know. That's kind of depressing. Maybe the magic shop will have something interesting to say.
It's a little bit of a plot hint there, talking about uh, the lady with a crazy outfit. That's uh, your rival Dola, who's uh, out to escape from the dungeon, but also wants to kill you because she thinks you killed her boss or her mentor or something. Of course, you've been framed because a hero would never do something like that, but uh, it creates a little a little tension, a little rivalry. I think Dola is playable in the, uh, the PSP version once you beat the game. Never quite got that far, but it would be interesting to play a magic user. These people seem surprisingly happy to be living at the bottom of a dungeon. Alright, so, okay, there's a little area I haven't totally explored yet, so I'm going to head that way. There we go. That's what I needed. Wait, is that it? Just a pitfall? That takes me back to the beginning? Man, that's not cool. Alright, so, um, kind of looks like we're, uh, we're stuck here. That's a bit of a bummer. If someone wanted to look up a fact and tell me what I'm supposed to be doing, I wouldn't complain. Uh, I don't remember having this much trouble in the past, but I was also not talking while uh, playing this game in previous sessions, so that can always be a little bit of a distraction. Yeah, I don't see any um, sledgehammerable spots. I can't break that spot with my sledgehammer, and I can't open the door. Oh! Okay, well, <sighs> there you go. It wasn't a locked door at all, I just had to push it open. How about that? I feel like that Far Side cartoon with the kid at the... Uh, gifted and talented student institute who is uh, pushing the pull door. Hmm. Everything seems so ominous. seems useful. It's green. I don't know what it is. Master keys. All right. Oh. How unfortunate. All right, so I have some keys. Let's see how many keys I actually have. Nine. Nice. So that's enough to open all the treasure chests in this area, which should um, probably get me through to where I need to go. A gold bar, okay, I'm sure I can sell that and buy more swords with it. Let's see, where were the other treasure chests? Oh, straight ahead. Alright. Alright, we're in the money now, folks. The game will fall uh, before me, unless, of course, I fall first. Maybe this would be a good time to save. Just in case. and another sword or something even better dare I dream oh, it's like they knew what I needed okay so I guess my survivability has increased considerably that's good um, I think I'll go back over to the shops and uh, see what I can buy with the gold bar And 
And once I've done that, then we can uh, move along to the next area. Oops, that wasn't where I wanted to go. Right. So besides the, uh, the obvious Falcom fans in the audience, has anyone actually, uh, anyone on the listening or watching the stream, has anyone actually played this before? Or is this pretty much new to everyone and baffling and weird? Kind of curious about that. And uh, I guess it's a little past half, uh, halfway through the hour, so I suppose it's time for a ident uh, station identification break. I'm Jeremy Parrish with US Gamer. Uh, we're doing our Thursday retro stream. I'm playing Brandish for Super NES, a uh, Falcom RPG published by Koei in America. And um, it's a little strange, a little disorienting, but pretty interesting, so hopefully you're enjoying it. And um, now that I have some cash in hand, I think I'm going to take off. So I'm finding my way slowly through this, this dungeon that I've been dropped into. I've fallen all the way to the bottom level of the dungeon. And I uh, have to fight my way back up. So it's a little bit like, uh, you know, Etrian Odyssey or Wizardry or, you know, any of, the, any of those games that have sort of a, a single location that you have to travel through a giant dungeon. Uh, this being, though, an action RPG as opposed to a classic RPG, and having this uh, sort of rotation effect to get around the dungeon. It's a little strange. But there's a, a remake coming out, I think sometime this month, maybe next month, from uh, being published by Xseed. It's a PSP game released for PSN, and I'm sure it'll be compatible with the Vita, because otherwise what's the point? So... Um, Everyone should check that out because it's a lot less confusing than this version. And it looks really nice, and the music is great. It's just a, a really fun, lovely little game that kind of makes good on the promise of this one. So let's see. Now I want some more doors. So... Um, oh, I think I should head back this way. I misread the map and it's very embarrassing. There we go. Nope, that door's stuck. Alright, these switches don't seem to make any difference, so... I suppose I can't open that door. So I guess I'll head over to the uh, looks like the east side of the map. I'll try south and then north. Although this game can be really disorienting, the little compass up at the top next to where it says Ruins Area 1 is really helpful. Helps keep me oriented. This is where I want to be. Yes. Wow, my arm strength has really increased. And the great thing about getting stronger is not only do I hit enemies or kill enemies in fewer hits, but uh, that also means there's less weapon degradation because every time you hit an enemy, you uh, lose a little bit of the weapon's durability. There's another door that I haven't opened yet, and it won't open. So screw you, basically. So I guess my only option now is to go north to a couple of doors up there. By god, we're going to get to the second level of this dungeon by the end of the stream. So help me. I have to say that little insects are surprisingly daunting when you have so much trouble turning around to hit them. Alright, there's one of the doors. 
and it won't open. So I'm really kind of being funneled into uh, one last spot here. There we go. That seems promising. A switch. Always a good thing in a dungeon. This is a surprising li surprisingly labyrinthine. More money. So I don't actually know what the switch opened, but I'm assuming that it unlocked some of the doors that I've been having trouble with. So we'll just kind of go through one by one and see what we can find. Uh, someone in the stream asked how many levels are in this game. I think it's something like 40 or 50. It's a pretty big dungeon, and it's broken into different areas. So the initial ruins starts out looking like this, but then you move into... Uh, more intimidating areas. There's one that's completely dark. Uh, and there's one area where you have these fast ninjas running around, and they're complete bastards, and I hate them. Uh, it gets pretty challenging the further you get into the game. But, you know, you can kill bugs and move up a level, so that's always nice. And it looks like I'm almost out of uh, short sword here. It's gonna break after I hit this guy. I can still punch, though. Uh, let's see, am I going the right way here? Yes. I think so. Yep. So hopefully that switch opened up uh, the door that was inaccessible down here, in the south. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Why do they hate me? Alright, so... It looks like there's only one other possibility. Of course, it's all the way on the other side of the map, because that's how they do in dungeons like this. But by god, we are going to get out of Ruins Area 1. It's the last thing I ever do. Well, hopefully not. That would be kind of lame. The last, my, my lasting legacy is to have made it to the second level of an old RPG. Oh, someone in the stream tells me I can use my keys to open doors, too. Oh, game design. Always such a delight. So let's see what happens if I try to open this with a door. Oh, how about that? There we go. Oh, look! Monsters. Monsters everywhere. Boy, if only I knew how to play video games, this stream would be going along so much faster. Using doors to open locked... keys to open locked doors? How unthinkable. Another sledgehammer. I'm almost out of keys here, so I guess I need to make them count at this point. The nice thing is, though, I am leveling up, so I'm starting to feel more confident about facing off with enemies. I don't feel like I'm as likely to be overwhelmed by them. Of course, I'll move on to another level, and things will be really difficult, because that's the nature of video games. So I think I've explored that whole area. Nope. 
don't see any sledgehammer points or anything like that over here, though, so it's kind of a waste of time. So that's out of the way. Um, I guess I should go back and... First I should buy some swords. So I'll do that first. so buff. Wait, I think that's the way I came. Ugh, this game. This game! So disorienting. On the plus side, I can uh, juice up, get some health. That's always nice. So I want to go south, and then east, and then south. There's the magic. I'm after weapons. I'm gonna say you are all brave people for sticking with me as I stumble slowly, haltingly through uh, <clears throat> through this dungeon. So, time to go back and check those last two doors that I couldn't open before. I'm sure using keys on them will help. There's one. Uh, both both on the the east side of the map, one south, one north. So we will take care of that, and that should be the end of this area. But it would help if I went the correct direction. Right. So east and then north. There we go. Man, this game is so disorienting. It's crazy. Right, goes over by the magic. There we go. All right. Um. No, I actually went completely the wrong direction. This is definitely one of the more obscure Super NES RPGs, and I guess playing it you can kind of understand why it would be. It's um, very opaque. Um, I actually uh, discovered this game for the first time for the Gaming Intelligence Agency as part of their, their crazy fundraiser toward the end of their life. I agreed that if uh, the site reached a certain uh, goal that I would play this game and write about it. And I did, but the site actually shut down before I had a chance to write about it. For them, so I just played it, you know, for myself and wrote about it for my own benefit. And I didn't really enjoy it at the time, but I think that, um, you know, as I've gotten older and maybe a little wiser, possibly a little wiser, and definitely more tolerant of quirky RPGs, uh, I kind of I, I see the appeal in it, and definitely the um, the PSP remake makes a big difference. And it looks like there's just one last place to check here, and I have one last key, so I think this is it. This is going to be the end of this stage. And then I can move along to area two, one down, like, 39 stages to go. Anyway, this game, uh, it's a little hard to love unless you're kind of in the right mood for it and willing to uh, accept its quirks on their own their own uh, 
benefits, basically. But, uh, again, I, I definitely check, recommend checking out the, uh, the PSP remake. Alright, so here we go. This is very exciting. I might make it to another area. Oh. I think that was uh, Dole is doing. Alright, there we go. I made it to Ruins Area 2. I'm on the second floor now. It's very satisfying. Oh, look at all that empty area that I have to chart. My god. So we'll save. So this could be this could be my uh, my Thursday retro stream for the next year. Just slowly pay, play through one level each week, but I think people would probably stop reading US Gamer if I did that. So I will not do that. But hopefully, as we kind of reach the end of the hour here, you guys have enjoyed checking out this uh, unusual and uh, decidedly quirky RPG. And hopefully, I've. I've been a somewhat interesting presenter. I'm not feeling great today. I'm a little under the weather, but uh, tried to keep it interesting. So I apologize if I didn't succeed with that mission. A, uh, a slow-paced dungeon crawler with uh, an extremely difficult orientation system is definitely not um, a crowd-pleaser. So, uh, again, I really appreciate the, what, probably... 28? Wow, 28 whole people who have stuck through for this crazy RPG. You guys are um, remarkable humans. And if you're wondering why I kind of do that crab walk thing sometimes, it's uh, to ma make sure that my map is being completed so I don't get lost or leave areas that are... Um, actually very small that haven't been mapped that look like they're much bigger it's just easier to keep track of things if you've played Etrian Odyssey you know the deal you gotta you gotta cover all the bases all the spaces hey it's a new kind of enemy and I have no sword sword short sword so time to equip a new one and hopefully there are more swords coming soon because I'm getting low on, on attack power I don't think I can use sledgehammers against enemies, which is really kind of a shame. And it's another scorpion. Very strong scorpion. Sounds intimidating. So I can find One-Eyed Willie's treasure. So I'm actually making pretty good progress on this floor. That's nice. It's nice to see. Of course, this floor doesn't have a uh, fountain like the first one does, I think. So at some point, I'm probably going to get low on life and have to hustle back to the floor below to recover some health. Anyway, um, it's uh, it's getting toward the end of uh, of our stream. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed checking out Brandish, and uh, again, thanks for for sticking around and watching. Um, it looks like JDK Love in the chat has been dropping all kinds of knowledge bombs on people, showing them. Uh, fan translations of the Super Obscure Brandish 4, which is cool. Um, there's actually a really good series analysis, um, kind of a retrospective on Hardcore Gaming 101 on the entire Brandish series, so that's definitely worth checking out if you have a chance. It's hardcoregaming101.net, I believe. 
So, um, yeah, go go check out what they had to say. It's, a, it's an interesting series. It definitely evolves and um, grows a lot over time compared to this game, um, like all good series should. And I think the last entry was sometime in the late 80s or late late 90s. So it's pretty much a, a dead concern at this point, but you know there was that PSP remake a while back. Uh, I'd love for them to follow up on that with remakes of Brandish 2, Brandish 3, but we'll probably never see that, which is a shame. I'm headed back to uh, the fountain here to heal up, and um, since I'm facing off against weakling enemies, I'm actually going to unequip the uh, the sword. I can. There we go. There we go. And just punch enemies to death because they're weaklings. Check it out. That's what arm strength will do for you. All right, everyone. Um, thanks again for watching the latest U.S. streamer. I think we'll probably do one more U.S. streamer before the holidays next Tuesday. Maybe one next Thursday also. Um, so be sure to stick around for those. And in the meantime, um, like I said before several times, be sure to watch for the PSP remake of this that's coming to PSN soon. Uh, I'm sure it's playable on Vita, Brandish the Dark Revenant. Um, it's similar to this game, but really polished up and expanded on, and uh, a lot of fun to play. So give it a try. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time we do a stream.